Hello and welcome to another edition of Cadence Fishing TV. You join us today at Messingham Sands, where we're going to do some silverfish fishing and hopefully catch one or two carp a little bit later on in the day. They're not a bad fish for a start, are they? Now, to get the best out of a, a six-hour fishing match, you might not be able to catch carp for, for the entirety of the match. You'd have to be on a really, really good peg to do that. So, quite often, the trick is to set your stall out to catch 30 to 40 pounder skimmers and roach, maybe some perch, and then feed some carp lines, set little traps and quickly visit them to catch a few carp and then come off and back onto your silverfish lines to just keep putting fish in your net. And at the end of the match, you'll find that those lads who have sat for carp for six hours might have caught really well for an hour, but you'll have caught for six hours and you'll probably get the best out of your peg in March. Another month, things might change and it'll all be carp, but for this month, it's the best way to go about catching for six hours and, and getting yourself a nice result. So as with all of Keb Johnson's lakes, they're absolutely full of, uh, of silverfish. He loves catching them. He, he's not really into catching carp. So he designed these venues for catching big weights of, of silverfish, which suits me just fine. I love it as well. So the, you can catch 80 pound of perch from some of these pegs. You can catch lots of skimmers, 80, 90 pound of skimmers. So it really is something to, uh, to target, especially now, like I say, in March. But of course, there are lots and lots of carp to catch as well. Uh, they, they range from four pound to 25 pounds. So uh, anything can happen, especially in a match. It, it's never over until the fat lady sings.
So at the start of the session today, I, uh, I cut five balls of ground bait in at 13 metres. It's about 12 foot deep and, and quite flat there, and I'm hoping to catch some skimmers over it. Uh, at present, we've had some nice hybrids and an odd skimmer, but I'm hoping for an arrival anytime soon. I've also had two looks now on the carp line, and I've not had a carp yet, so they're proving quite hard to come by at the minute, but I'm going to persevere, keep feeding it, and, and that's generally the way forward. When they do arrive, hopefully we'll catch four or five, and, but in between time, like I said earlier, this skimmer line is going to show its worth because if we'd have just sat and fished for carp today, we really would have been uh, struggling for any, any kind of a match weight. So I'm going to catch a few more skimmers and then have another look for some carp. Hopefully one or two will turn up. I'm also steadily loose feeding uh, casters around about five metres. It's a little bit shallower there. And uh, with the mild weather that we're just coming into, there's a chance that uh, they'll come close and I'll be able to put a weight together there quite quickly. But we'll see how things go. It's early days yet. That's a decent fish. That had it just as it settled. It's a big roach. I like them. There's a big head of roach in here and if you feed cast the short there's a good chance that one or two will turn up perhaps even bigger than this, we'll see. Beautiful fish. Ooh. I've been fishing uh, two red maggots or two casters or, or a single caster on this 13 metre line. And I had a spell earlier of a uh, very small roach. And I've put, I've put an expander pellet, a six milli expander pellet on. And uh, ho hopefully that will sort out one or two better fish. It's a good tactic. You get slightly less bites and you're less busy, but you do come back with a better fish uh, more often than not. Obviously in 12 foot of water, these fish will have a tendency to lift if you do too much loose feeding. So what I'm tempted to do on this long line in particular is to just cup in uh, ground bait laced with casters and uh, hopefully we'll keep some skimmers nailed to the floor. I really, uh, I don't want to get too tangled up with uh, fishing three foot deep in, in March. As I said just a little while ago, this, uh, this expander pellet is, uh, is starting to single out some bit better fish. I'm not catching quite so many roach and uh, it could be the way forward. I will steadily drip some pellets in there. Hopefully the noise will attract one or two carp. We'll have another look in a little while. But at the minute, I think while we're catching these skimmers, we should make hay and uh, catch as many as we can. Because as I say, there's been no carp showed yet. Well, as with most pellet fishing, um, it's quite important not to have too much line on the deck. This I've just set just touching um, and it's showing up the bites quite well. 
if you have just too much line on the deck very often a soft bait like pellet will be it'll go in the mouth it'll get chewed up and you won't see a bite and you, you know you, you're better off if you can if the conditions allow and today we've got perfect conditions for for what I'm trying to do um, you're best off just having it just touching maybe an inch on and just going from there I'm uh, I'm pretty sure that loose feeding in such deep water is not the way to go so I'm going to uh, I'm going to concentrate on this long line just potting in a ball of ground bait every six or seven fish uh, I'm going to lace that with casters pack it with as much bait as I can and maybe a few expanders over the top but I'm not going to pull the catty back out there anymore I'm just going to loose feed short and uh, pot in balls of ground bait long and, and see how we go from there. So looking at the rigs today that I've used, it's uh, quite evident to see that I've used some quite positive rigs really. Um, I think when you're fishing for skimmers with pellets, you're really uh, best off with a big, big dropper. So what I've done is I've fished what they call a double bulk. So there's my main bulk there, which is the, ma the majority of the float shotter capacity. But to get a really nice bite indication off these skimmers, it's sometimes a really good idea to use these uh, big droppers bunched up as a double bulk. Um, I've used an, o, an O12 up length there today. I could have used an O10, but there was a very good chance we'd hook a carp or two and I thought I'd give myself a chance, but uh, unfortunately we've not hooked one yet. Uh, and the hook for the 6mm expander is my favourite uh, LWG, Guru LWG size 14 and uh, as you can see that that bait really hides that big hook it's a beautiful hook to use for a, an expander so for the carp rig i've used a, a gram tear down it's like a, a body down shape with a uh, a stem interestingly i've uh, i've put a little bit of silicon on just to thicken the tip as a sight you know just to help me with with seeing it I'm getting on now this has got a carbon stem uh, which I, I quite like for carp because they're the, they're the strongest they're quite uh, bulletproof uh, and for the skimmer rig it's a similar shape float which I really I do like for uh, for deep deep ponds uh, and this one's got a steel stem uh, obviously fishing for skimmers you can be a little bit more uh, a risque if you wish with the uh, with the stem I don't find any trouble but uh, with carp I, I think I think you might get one or two two problems with the steel bending by contrast uh, today I've used this uh, quite positive Olivet rig it's uh, 0.8 of a, of a gram and together with the rest of the shotting capacity we've got just shy of a gram as I say it's, it's about 12 foot deep so you, you really you want something that you can read properly and uh, it's a nice simple setup won't let you down not too not too many tangles at all uh, and a nice again a nice positive 
telltale dropper just to show those bites up. Uh, I've got an 014 and that's an LWG iDuck. So for the hard pellet rig which I've rigged up today with an Olivet um, I use the 014 Silstar. Uh, I find it absolutely reliable, it's, uh, it's a fantastic line, it's been my favourite for a very long time. So I've used the Cadence CP2000 pole today which I'm absolutely delighted with. I've had it for about eight months now and it's been fantastic. The uh, elastic rating is, uh, this, well this is a 14 elastic and I, I'd use that with absolute confidence with the pole. It's, uh, it's a lot stronger than uh, I imagined it would be. It's a fantastic stiff long pole. Uh, and I'm delighted with it but uh, yeah this is a 14 elastic which I'll use with absolutely no fear at all. So on my skimmer rig I've used a uh, doubled up Preston 5 elastic, lovely and soft, uh, quite forgiving and uh, I find it's, it's a really good way of uh, getting the best out of uh, a nice soft elastic for bigger fish like skimmers, per perhaps an odd carp. So I've had two or three goes now on this pole line for a carp and it's not borne any fruit so I've chucked my bomb and uh, we've managed to catch two in two chucks um, so hopefully hopefully we've worked out how to catch that target weight that I was talking about earlier 20 or 30 pounder skimmers maybe a, a tiny bit more and, and some carp to top up. But I think if I had a fish for carp all day today, uh, from what I've seen, the response wise, uh, I think we would have really struggled. So again, it kind of underlines the importance of not putting all your eggs in one basket and, and looking for silverfish in, in this time of year, you know, early March, uh, and also again, later on in, in the year, December, Feb, you know, December to February. There we go. So when I punch meat, I like to do it with a, a section of top kit. It's an old, an old top kit that I've obviously broke. So rather than throw it away, I like to make a, a useful punch. Obviously I've got several, all different diameters, uh, and simply push it through the meat, push it out until you've got the required size cut it off with your bait needle on you go now I I tend to use a a uh, pellet band pull it tight pull it through open it up you, you could throw it out like that but I like to use just a little bit of silicon a little float silicon pop it through and then just trap it down like so and your hook should sit just outside your bait and that's kind of an optimum length that's perfect so any longer than that and you might miss a few bites any shorter than that and you'll do the same because the bait will mask the hook 
So just about that, aim for that distance from bait to, to hook and you should be fine for it. Time's getting on now, and I'm going to call this the last fish of the day. Let's see what we've got. Nice little skimmer to end with. Well, there you have it. Uh, about 40 pounds of mainly skimmers. I've had just two carp today. They haven't fed, but that's fishing. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.